Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are talking about some really important spring security questions. These are the kind of questions you actually get in your real interview, especially when you mention spring boot and security in your resume. So let's start with the first question. How does spring security integrate with O02 for authorization? So the question is how does spring security integrate with O02 for authorization? So when we say O02 with spring security, we are basically talking about using an external provider to handle the login and token generation. Spring security works as the client here. When a user tries to access the protected resource, Spring Security checks if the user is already authenticated or not. If not, it redirects the user to the OO2 provider, for example, Google, GitHub or your company's own authorization server. So the user logs in on the provided page. After successfully logging, the provider sends an authorization code or a token back to our application. Spring Security then uses the code to request an access token from the provider. Once the access token is received, Spring Security uses this token to understand who is the user is and what permission or what scope they have. From that point, for every request to a protected endpoint, Spring Security reads the token, validate it and then decide whether the user can access that API or not. The main flow is very simple. First, user hit the resource, then redirected to the provider. Then a login page comes, so the user login and then the user get the token and then Spring Security uses that token to authorize the request. So you must have seen whenever you are logging in somewhere and you have been asked to, about your Google credentials. So that is the same thing. This gives us centralized authentication and clean authorization without handling raw password inside our application. So this is very important question for all the senior Java developer out there. And I hope it is clear now and you will be able to answer this question in future. I have these type of questions and all other scenario based questions in my interview kit. You can check it out in your description and grab your copy now. Now let's move to our next question, which is explain cross origin resource sharing means CORS and how you would configure it in a Spring Boot application. So this question is not for the beginner, but it is good to know the answer. So you can answer it like this. CORS stands for cross origin resource sharing. It is all about which front end domains are allowed to call your backend API. So by default, what happens? Browser blocks calls from one origin to another origin if CORS is not configured properly. So if your front end is running on, for example, HTTP localhost uh, 3000 and your Spring Boot API is running on maybe localhost 8080, the browser will treat these as different origins. To allow this safety, we configure CORS in Spring Boot. And there are two common ways to do that. The first way is using the cross origin annotation on your controller or any specific handler method. Then here you can define allowed origin, allowed method and allowed headers. And the second one is configure CORS globally using a web MVC configure or spring security config. So there is a method called add course mapping. So you can override that method and use the CORS method so like chorus method, HTTP.chorus method in the security configuration and then define a CORS configuration source beam. In both cases, the idea is same. We specify which origin can call our API which HTTP method are allowed and which headers are allowed. This way we keep the API secured but still allow the valid front-end application to talk to our back-end APIs without, without any issue. Now let's move to our third question which is explain security context and security context holder in Spring Security. So in Spring Security whenever a user is authenticated their authentication details are stored in some, uh, somewhere called security context. So this security context holds information like who is the user is what are their roles and what are the authorities they have and what are their authentication status. So now Spring Context Holder is a class that gives us access to this security context and it stores the context for the current thread of execution. So in simple terms, you can say that Spring Context stores authentication details and then there is security context holder that provide access to that context from anywhere in the code. So in a typical request after successful authentication, Spring Security sets the authentication object inside that Spring Security. Then if you are inside a controller, service or any other bean, you can call the security context holder by using get context method or by using get authentication to get the current user details. And this is how Spring Security makes user information available throughout the request handling. 
you do not have to pass the user object manually to each layer of the application. So understanding Spring Security and Spring Security Holder is very important for you because many access control decisions depends on this context. So all these questions and concepts are presents are in my interview kit with, which is very structured by the way. So you can get your copy in the description. It will speed up your interview preparation and you will see the result. Within a week, you will be able to clear your interview rounds. Now we move to our next question. What is O02 authorization, O02.0 authorization code grant type. So first of all, we need to understand what is O02.0. O02 authorization code is the safest O02 flow for the web apps because the password never touches our application. So basically user clicks login, then Spring sends them to the O02.0 provider login page. So they enter their password there, not in our app. And after login, provider sends back a one-time code to our backend API and our backend API exchange that code for an access token and refresh token. So the browser sees only the authorization code and the final access token. The actual token exchange happens server to server which is safest. So access token is used to call protected API and refresh token is used to get a new access token when the old one is expired. So the simple flow is very basic. You log in onto the browser and you get the authorization code. Then backend gets the token and then you are able to access the API. Simple, right? So let's move to our next question, which is how does Spring Security protect against CSRF and when you have to disable CSRF? So remember few years ago, there was a security breach happened and because of that most companies are now removing the vulnerabilities from that code. So one of the vulnerability is CSRF. So CR CSRF means fake request sent from another website using your logged in session. Spring security basically generates a unique token per user session and this token is stored on the server and given to the client and every request must send that token back in header or form data. Server then verified it. If token is missing, then request is blocked. This protects browser based application very well. Now the question comes, when do we disabled it? So when we built REST API that are not used by browser like mobile apps or postman or backend calls or automated system calls, then we have to disable it. Why? Because CSRF mainly attack browsers using cookie. And if your API uses a token based authorization like JWT or does not rely on cookie, CSRF risks are very low. So managing CSRF tokens became unnecessary complexity. So that's why we disable it. But it is disabled only for stateless known browser API. So I hope you got the idea. Now we move to our next question. How do you implement method level security in a Spring application? And what is the advantage of that? So we enable method level security by adding, there is an annotation called enable method security. But that was the old way. Now we have an annotation called enable global method security. Then we have to add, use certain annotation like pre-authorized annotation or secured annotation. So pre-authorized annotation checks before method runs and secured annotation checks the, the role only. So if you are using a pre-authorized annotation, you have to mention that what type of role it has. I will show you the example on the screen and these checks reads the login user from the security context holder. Remember, I have earlier told you about uh, security context holder. So the advantage is simple. The security context holder keeps the information about the user. So the advantage is simple. You secure logic at the function level, not just URL level. So even if someone somehow reaches the endpoint, they still cannot run the protected method unless they pass the check. This gives you very tight control on sensitive operations. So all right, guys, wrapping up here. Today we covered a uh, real part of authentication, authorization, like filter chain, token, password, safety, and spring security. In most interview, what matters is not the full syllabus. It is clarity of the thoughts. So questions like O2.0, flow, token validation, filter chain, uh, method security are the ones that decide the outcome of your interview. As I told you, I have also created an interview preparation kit that has spring security questions and scenario based questions as well. So it keeps all the important questions in one place written in a simple word. So you can revise very fast without losing the accuracy. You will start seeing the result very fast. So get it from the link in the description. So that's it for the video. I will see you in the next one.